a lot of the stimulus funding that was was being um, uh, released by the governments. A lot of it went into energy and energy projects. Uh, grid instability pro problems caused by the large-scale wind farms in China and Europe has further highlighted the need for storage. We've now seen large-scale demonstrations of energy storage systems. And so p before people, you know, when you've got a new technology that is still in the laboratory, everyone's a little bit anxious and cautious about its implementation and using, using it. But with these large-scale demonstrations, there's more confidence now in energy storage technologies, as, and particularly in the flow batteries. And new government initiatives in German, Germany and Japan, which are now starting to provide rebates for energy storage systems, is this is something else that will help to, to develop and uh, the market and provide the volume that is going to be needed to support manufacturers with, with further cost reductions. Uh, we've also seen in recent years, uh, because of the declining photovoltaic prices, a lot of companies that set, that set up to produce solar cells are not, not making any money now. So in order to be able to stay afloat and stay viable, they're looking rather than, instead of selling solar panels or solar cells, they're looking to, to try and get into the market a package which includes a system which includes the renewable plus storage. So therefore they're expanding into the storage market as well to provide systems to the market rather than just the solar panels. So that's, going to, so that's increasing the demand as well for, for storage. And fortunately in the last few years we've seen quite a few companies now producing commercial, starting to produce commercial flow battery systems for the market. By Runke Power, Guildmeister in Germany, um, putting them into, into buildings for uh, backup power, uh, Prudent uh, Energy in California uh, at uh, an onion farm, I think, in California. Um, so this is a solar recharging station that was, that's been installed in Austria, for, which takes solar energy to, to charge up the battery, and the battery, uh, the vanadium battery is then used to charge electric motor, uh, motorcycles and electric bicycles. Um, at, at one of this in, in, in Ost, around uh, Vienna, I think that was. Uh, this is uh, so again in Germany. We've now in the last couple of years we've sort of seen um, another company, Schmidt Energy, which is which is a manufacturer of solar equipment. Now again, because of the decline and the slowing down of the solar industry, they're looking to try and expand into other markets, and they see the energy storage as an important market. And now they're starting to produce vanadium flow batteries by Schmidt. And Schmidt is an energy, um, an energy equipment manufacturer. So what their focus is now to, to use their manufacturing capabilities to, de to design and build automated production lines for vanadium batteries. And by having an automated assembly line, hopefully the cost is going to come down very quickly in the future. Oops. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is another uh, company in China that's producing vanadium batteries. This is in Chengdu. Um, at our university, we're going to be installing. We recently, the university recently built this uh, high, very uh, uh, sophisticated new building for all our energy technologies and uh, energy technology research. It's got, it has 120 kilowatts of um, uh, photovoltaic panels on the roof, and and in the basement of the building we have a specially purpose-built room where we're going to install a vanadium battery. And early, uh, earlier in the year, um, one of the companies that went, we went out to tender, and um, Gildemeister, the German company, Gildemeister won the tender, and later in the year they'll be actually installing a, a 30 kilowatt, 120 kilowatt hour vanadium battery, which will be integrated to the um, photovoltaic panels on the roof to be able to store energy from uh, uh, during off-peak times and use it during the peak times to offset the, the cost of electricity. Now, in Australia, one of the things that we've uh, that we have been experiencing, I'm not sure what the what the electricity prices are here in Canada, but in Australia, our price electricity prices for most households are actually now. Um, day, uh, time of day. They, they have, we have different tariffs for different times of day. So in, for in our house, for example, 
between 2 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night, which is the peak time, we pay 60 cents a kilowatt hour, 60 cents a kilowatt hour for our electricity. At night time, between, uh, when it's off peak, between 10 o'clock at night and 7 a.m. in the morning, it's 12 cents a kilowatt hour. So there's a huge differential. So if it be, a lot of people are now looking at that with this new market emerging for residential sort of applications where pe individuals could have a small battery in their in their garage to store to charge it up at night time with 12 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity and then use it during peak times so that they don't have to pay 60 cents a kilowatt hour during peak. So this is a new market that's just emerging now and I'm not quite sure how other countries are following with these sort of differential tariffs but I think they will start to we'll start to see them more and more in the future. Um, I'll just quickly go into some new new work that's also being done. We've, we did some work on a generation two vanadium battery uh, to try and increase the energy density. Uh, uh, we, but that's still at the basic research. But in a, a couple of years ago, uh, Pacific Northwest Laboratories in the USA, one, a DOE um, national laboratory, actually came up with a, an improvement on our vanadium battery where they in, in the conventional vanadium battery, we use vanadium sulfate and sulfuric acid. But by adding a little bit of HCl to the electrolyte, they found that they can actually get more vanadium per liter. And that meant that you can have less volume to produce the same amount of energy. In other words, you increase the energy density. And also, they found that you can get a much higher temperature range. Uh, and as a result of all of this development, they have licensed the, t the technology to three different companies now. One of them is, uh, sorry, okay, somewhere. Okay, uh, first of all, there's one company called Imagy in California, which used to, which used to uh, produce iron chromium batteries, but now they've switched over to the vanadium battery and they're starting to manufacture and supply in California. Another uh, company in Massachusetts has been set up also to commercialize this new generation three vanadium battery. And Uni Energy, which is the company which was actually founded by the original inventors at, um, at PNNL, the people who originally came up with this uh, mixed acid electrolyte, they raised more than $20 million from investors, and they've also been partnering with Ronke Power in China to fast track the supply of the commercial product. So uh, within six months, they were ab ab able to actually produce their first products that they were ready to start testing. One of the beauties of flow batteries for electric vehicles is sort of is the fact that you can recharge them, but just by plugging them into a power supply the way uh, overnight, the way you would normally recharge your phone phone battery, for example. But you could also exchange your electrolyte because the energy is stored in an electrolyte. So you could drive into a refueling station in the future one day, for example, empty out the solutions uh, into underground tanks, and then using either solar energy or off-grid electricity at night time, cheap electricity at night time, you could recharge the solutions and, the, and then use them the next day to refuel cars. So this instant recharging, re instant refueling, really would take away a lot of the current problems with electric cars, which is that it takes hours to recharge. And you don't want to be hanging around for hours waiting in a garage, waiting for you to, recha waiting to recharge your electric car. So by having refueling, it, it allows people to use their electric cars and refuel at any time, but without, without um, placing a huge burden on the grid for ex to, to recharge batteries during the daytime. So you, you could recharge the solutions at nighttime and use the existing uh, electricity generation capacity. So people have always been interested in flow batteries for electric cars, but the energy density has been too small. In other words, you'd need such a huge battery that you wouldn't have any room for the driver or passengers or anything else, or the battery would take up all the weight and, and the space in the car. But So that's why we were sort of working on this generation two and so on. But still, that's not good enough. And But where the future is, I think, is in this hybrid vanadium oxygen fuel cell. And that's where a lot of people are now starting. We started working on that back in the 1990s, and also um, workers in Japan came up with the idea in 1992. But very little work uh, has gone on since then. And, but in the last two years, a lot of people have started looking at that, and researchers are now starting to continue developing that. And by 
with the vanadium oxygen redox fuel cell, what we have is a single tank, one tank only of vanadium, but the other side is just air. It, it works like a fuel cell where you just use oxygen from the air, you, you blow it through the fuel cell, that reacts with the vanadium. So by eliminating one tank, we've halved the, halved the weight and volume and we've doubled the energy density further. So this is, I think, the future. If, we, if, that, can, if that can be developed in the next few years, then I think there's a, this opens up a huge new market in electric cars as well, and that, that can, would be really vast. So, as I mentioned, cost. All of these markets are all, <laughs> the growth of these markets are all linked to the cost. And uh, there are many aspects of the cost. It's the cost of the stack, the cost of the membranes, the electrodes. Now, all, uh, in the early days, a lot of these materials were extremely expensive, but now there's a lot of um, new manufacturers coming online. The cost of these materials is, has reduced dramatically. Um, with automa automated stack assembly, the stack costs are going to come down further. But with, but as far as the rest of the system, it's the cost of the electrolyte. And whenever you've got um, cost for times greater than four hours, we can see that even with current cost estimates, the cost of the vanadium battery for large-scale uh, energy storage applications, more than four hours, it's, it can be we can project it to be half the cost of lead-acid batteries, which are really the, the cheapest types of batteries you can buy today. But lead-acid batteries don't last for hundreds of thousands of cycles, so you have to replace them quite regularly. Um, so even with current costs, we can see vanadium batteries for these applications are very, very competitive compared to other types of energy storage technologies. But in order to really get penetrate more of the markets, we need to get that cost even further down. And to understand the relative importance of the electrolyte on the vanadium battery cost, I've got this diagram here which shows uh, for when you need, if you've got one hour of storage, the cost of the electrolyte represents about between 30 to 40 percent, depending on what vanadium price we assume, represents 30 to 40 percent of the total battery cost. But when you get to, say, six hours of storage, it's between 70 to 80 percent of the vanadium of the total battery cost. So it just shows you the importance of the electrolyte, and and the lower its cost, the more markets the vanadium battery will be able to penetrate into. Okay, and as, as Terry has mentioned already, this instability in the vanadium price has been a major problem, and that needs to be leveled off. And hopefully, by having further capacity. Uh, ma ensuring that the demand matches the supply, hopefully these spikes and these, this instability will be eliminated because this is a, a really bad problem for, for producers.